pregame.com. The flavor of the week, RG3 and the Washington Redskins battle the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday. Washington, a two and a half point home favorite, total 47 and a half. Marco, I love the reaction of the Redskin players. I give them credit when Shanahan said, when they were three and six, he says, we are going to play the rest of the season to find out who's going to be on this team next year. This is trial time. And of course, they took it the way he wanted it, I guess. I'll give him credit and say that he actually wanted them to pick up their game. They've won three straight games. Have I finally got you to come over to the good side when it comes to RG3? You weren't crazy about him early in the season, were you? Well, I mean, he's great. The defense sucks and the defense still sucks. And uh, I don't know where you're going with this game, but I'm looking at the total in this game. And I know everybody's looking at Baltimore and they're pointing out that, you know, Baltimore all of a sudden can't score any points in 13, 16, and 20 in the last three games. Well, guys, let's look at who they played. Two of those three games were, you know, as you like to refer to, and we got to get it in at least one of the <laughs> videos, those were snot knockers against the Steelers. And, you know, they're not going to score points in those games. And then the third game was sandwiched in between the two Pittsburgh games when they had to travel to the West Coast after playing a Sunday night game against Pittsburgh. I think you're going to see Baltimore get back to their hurry-up offense and they're going to score some points on Washington. I'm still trying to figure out, maybe one of you guys can tell me, why did Tom Coughlin quit throwing downfield the second half of the Monday night game? Well, that's a point I was going to throw to Steve real quick. <laughs> First of all, I want you to know, sir, that I've never said snot knocker on these videos. I've said snot, but never snot knocker. Anyway. <laughs> First okay, time for every hairs. <laughs> but anyway, I'm kidding. So listen, splitting hairs. Two things that he mentioned. First of all, when you talk about Washington in this winning streak, three-game win streak, I don't care about the win over Philadelphia. I mean, yeah. Philadelphia is a barely an NFL team over the last six weeks. They took advantage of a ton of Dallas mistakes in the second quarter of that Thanksgiving Day game. And then last Monday, yeah, they win the game. Give them credit. Whether they were the right side or not, the bottom line was the Giants head out first down them 16-7 to by halftime. 273 yards on 40 plays to 156 on 20. And in fact, when Washington set up to kick that field goal to go up 16-10, which they did, 20 first downs to nine. How about 379 yards for New York to 229 for the Redskins? But New York kept making those boneheaded mistakes when they'd get the ball deep in, in, in the in, in territory of, of the Washington Redskins. He makes a great point that I asked him on by text. Why are they not throwing the, the ball in first down against Washington? No pass rush, no secondary, and they're playing into their strength by running the ball in first and second down. I think I don't think they cut the grass in Washington for about <laughs> two months. Did you see that field? It was like the slowest track ever. I'm, I, I liked the over before, and then mm -hmm. before the game started, money's coming in on the under, and you know, maybe weather's not completely ideal, but then I get a text midway through the first quarter. It says, don't be an idiot. This is the <laughs> slowest field I've ever seen bet under. So we get that. I've got my, my Cantor tablet, so I'm jamming oh, in sure. under bets, and it's dropping mm -hmm. like crazy. So I, I have to say, you know, with Joe Flacco, he's a great quarterback at home with the, with the no huddle and the like. But when he goes on the road, we're talking nine points against the Kansas City Chiefs. We're talking about complete ineptness against some average defenses like San Diego. I do not trust their I trust their defense to get back on track here and I do think that Washington just won their Super Bowl and a super, a super emotional game a lucky fumble that got sure. recovered for the touchdown though they did fumble going in at the end of the third quarter so maybe you could say they deserve seven points but I don't like the spot here at all for Washington and Baltimore is looking at that schedule and they're like we better we better start winning some games or this division could fall away from us but I, I can't see Flacco putting up big numbers so I think the question is you know Baltimore is going to get 20 24 is it going to be enough Good stuff. My free pick. Well, I'm going to back the Baltimore Ravens who are on the road. As Fezzik just alluded to, this is a huge game for the Baltimore Ravens. Just check out the rest of their remaining schedule and Pittsburgh's, and you'll see what we're talking about. Again, Flacco is not my favorite quarterback in the NFL, and he's a, it's a big home road dichotomy for Flacco in this offense. And the offense that they went with before the season started, we talked about it with Marco, who pointed out it's not the type of offense that benefits this aging, somewhat slow defense very well, and we saw the defense pay for what the offense was doing early on in the season. But here's a, a point that you won't hear hardly anywhere when they talk about this game. I like RG, RG3. I liked him when he was in college. He's one of the smartest guys you're going to see on and off the field. But they're handling this guy with kid gloves right now. 
the Washington Redskins have more passes behind the line of scrimmage than any, uh, any other NFL team right now in the business because they are trying to handle this guy very carefully. He's doing a lot of dump-offs. And I think a team like Baltimore, even though they're getting older, a little bit slower on defense, they're going to be able to prepare for this all week long. The occasional deep throw he's going to make, but most of the time it's going to be real safe stuff. And by the way, don't I, I mentioned this on the radio show earlier this week. Don't freak out next year early in the season when Shanahan and his staff try to to take RG3 to that next level of NFL quarterback, start to open up the playbook a little bit more and have their offense depend on his arm going downfield. He's going to struggle. And you're going to hear all the same people who ripped Cam Newton. Oh, we were over, you know, we were overhyped on, on RG3. He was overhyped, blah, blah, blah. Bottom line is, he's going to have to get to that next level, but right now he's not there. I think Baltimore does, uh, devises a game plan that can keep him under, under reign, so to speak, in this one. I'm going to take Baltimore plus the points over the Redskins, my free pick. And when we come back, we got the Lions Packers battle. Stick around for that and more right here at pregame.tv.